All right, I changed the title a little bit. So um, the, uh, the previous panel, you know, tokenization is go only going to be a big story for tens of millions of people if we have scalability, right? Without scalability, it's going nowhere, trust me. Um, today I'm going to talk about a new uh, protocol design that we just came up with recently that are called a progressively uh, hybrid roller. Um, so let's start with Tyco. So Tyco is a base roller. What it means is that, you know, it's really up to the L1 validators to determine the sequencing of transactions and blocks of Tyco blockchain. So we don't have a consensus algorithm among uh, special nodes. We don't have special nodes at all, no super nodes. All right, so our smart contract on layer one, uh, we call the, to uh, the um, protocol smart contract, maintains a ring buffer or a queue of slots that when, when uh, people pr propose slots, uh, blocks, those blocks will be uh, put into those slots, okay? But it's really up to the L1 validators to decide, you know, which slot to use. So in this example, it's like one ABC is the first, second, and third block. But it can, um, if these blocks are proposed almost at the same time, then, you know, we don't know, right? Maybe it's organized this way. Uh, so the, the sequencing really matters um, because, you know, on, on layer two, we decide a set of rules to map the proposed block to the actual Tyco block on layer two. This mapping is deterministic once the location or the, or the index or the projection of the proposed block is uh, set on layer one. In the worst case scenario, a proposed block may, may uh, contain like, a lot of transactions, but none of the transactions is valid on layer two based on the parent block. Then we have an empty block. But I, I just want to highlight that you know, for all the proposed blocks, there will be one Typo L2 block derived. And this, this mapping is not done on L1. So the L1 contract knows nothing about this mapping. It's only the L2 node software that knows this uh, mapping rules and uh, do the conversion. So let's say these three blocks are proposed in this order. So we may have one, two, three, these three L2 blocks. But if the L1 validator decide to you know, arrange the blocks this way, then with the same data, you know, we can end up with different L2 blocks, right? So the sequencing really matters about which transaction got executed on layer two and which, are, which ones are not. So here, you know, if we just do this, we have a sovereign ro ro uh, rollup. So this rollup allows all the peers on layer two to know all the, you know, the layer two state after each block. So, you know, it's, it's a functional uh, rollup. The problem is the L1 or the smart contracts on L1, they don't know anything about L2 states, except the first one which can be hard coded into L1 smart contract, right? So this is not good because we want to in enable like interactions between layer one and layer two, for example, to raise uh, asset cross. So what we can do, as of now, Tyco allow people to submit a zero knowledge proof backed state transition. So in this example, people say, okay, the one proof will say for block C or the third block, the parent should be 102 and the, uh, this new block has should be 103, right? So this is, this is like a assertion or something, backed by math, right? In going forward, you know, we, we don't believe one ZK proof is secure, is trustworthy, because you know, due to the uh, implementation details, it, it may be buggy, right? So in the future, we are going to embrace a multi-ZK proof approach to make sure it's more trustworthy, okay? So let's say two provers prove the third block, you know, one after another, and then 
another prover just proved the second block. So the block proven can be uh, proving can be out of order, can be in any order. All right. And now the first one got proved. Now you can see the, this first prover. He connects the the dots right uh, from the judicial block to the first block. So this. So now block one got verified. So by being verified, I mean now on layer one, all the smart contracts can trust that on layer two, the block has for the first block is 101, right? You can trust that. So we can keep co connecting the dots and each block will be verified in this order. So block verification is in this order, but proving can be out of order, right? All right. So who can prove my block if I'm the block proposer, right? Some people call it a sequencer, but we stack we just call it call them like proposer, all right? So if you want to propose a block, you want to talk to as many potential provers off chain as possible and decide which one you want to use. Usually, you just use the the cheapest one, right? Because that will reduce your cost. And then once this prover is um, selected, by selected I mean you you get assigned. Uh, you get a signature from that prover, and then you just uh, put that prover into your uh, block proposal transaction. All right. So now you enter a, a contract with that pr uh, that prover. This contract will basically say, you know, as the uh, the prover will say, okay, the proposer now you need to pay me some ether as the proving fee. Right. This payment is immediate and not uh, refundable. Uh, the prover then plays a really large bond in Tyco token. And this bond will just say, okay, I commit to this proving uh, within like uh, 30 or, or 90 minutes, this proving window. If I fail to uh, prove uh, this block, you know, all the bond will be burnt. Otherwise, you return my bond, right? So it's a very simple uh, contract between the proposer and the provers. So this 90 minutes proving window, you know, during which only the assigned prover can prove the block. What if this prover failed to prove the block? Will the block ever be proven? Yes. So the block can become open, meaning you know, it can be proven by any other provers, and those provers don't have to place any bond, right? It's an open competition. So the, so the block can be open when uh, the 90 minutes has passed, there's no proof, uh, proof submitted from the assigned prover. Um, or if the assigned prover has already submitted a valid proof, but maybe people feel like this one is the incorrect one. I want to you know, uh, commit another one. So it's also possible. The tokenomics will look like this. So the proposer will earn transaction fee on layer two, right? And all of those fees, he is willing to pay the proving fee. But of course, you know, during the initial period, you know, the, the, um, the L2 transaction fees won't be as much. You know, it, it's, maybe it's not even good enough to make the uh, proving fee payment. So because of that, we want to mint extra tokens to reward uh, the proposers. The prover earns the ETH uh, proving fee uh, by placing a deposit, and hopefully the deposit can you know, be refunded. Otherwise, we'll use the bond to pay the open provers. Um, and in this case, whoever is the fattest prover will win, right? But we have to realize there are more than one prover, you know, proving the same block. But in the case of the dedicated or the assigned prover, each block is just being proved once. No resources wasted on proving a single block. In our previous test, and we enabled more than one party to prove the same block, which is actually a waste of resource. And using this approach, we enable, you know, the, um, uh, our layer two transaction fee is really minimized. Okay, so the key question to ask here is do we really need one ZKP for every block? Probably not, right? Because, so right now this is the current solution. Every block needs at least a ZKP, right? What if we just replace all those ZKP with a optimistic, like a bond, right? Something as, you know, this, this bond reads like this. I bet the parent block has is this value and, the, and after this block, the hash should be the other value. If I'm wrong, burn my bond. So it's an optimistic strategy, right? Um, this optimistic transition uh, can be used to verify a block. If, for example, 90 minutes or 30, uh, 60 minutes has passed, there's no challenge, right? Nobody said this is wrong. 
then it can be used to uh, verify the block. Um, if, there's a, if there's a contradiction transition or if this transition has been challenged, then we need to solve that problem. How? Let's say Alice submit uh, optimistic transition for block B, and then Bob feels like this is wrong. I, I think it's the other value, right? So in this case, we mark Alice's uh, transition as being challenged, then we need to zero knowledge proof to prove it. So zero knowledge proof only comes in handy if, if it is necessary. Otherwise, we don't want to waste resources on that. Okay. So if, on the other hand, if a Bob is proven to be correct, then we use Bob's uh, zero knowledge proof, that transition, to finalize the block. And then uh, Alice will lose all the bound, right? And, and Bob earns, you know, parses the bound and Bob's uh, Alice bound, and then the prover will also earn some extra bound from Alice. It's different from uh, optimistic rollup because, you know, we, we, in, we make sure at least a small percentage of blocks will always have to be proven by ZK. Why? Because we want, to, we want the provers to be around and you know, when we really need them, they are ready. All right. So the ge more generalized idea is look, looking like this. So you can see optimistic uh, transition is really the, the cheapest proof. Actually, it's no proof. It's just a, a assertion, right? Um, you need a larger bound to accept this one to finalize a, a block. And it's less trustworthy. On the other end, you know, you, you see more expensive proofs, which is ZK, and it's uh, more trustworthy. Probably you don't need a bound, right? Or a very smaller bound. Once this less trustworthy one got challenged, you demand a higher tier proof, right? A stronger proof. And we can place something in the middle, right? So for example, we don't need a ZK. We can provide a SGX proof, right? Which is still centralized, but it's still kind of like trustless, right, or trustworthy one. And if you still don't think this single ZK proof is trustworthy, you can demand a multi-proof ZK, a multi-ZK proof to be the even higher, more trustworthy one that you demand, right? So it's totally possible. So here, with this configuration, we can say, okay, 10% needs SGX, 1% needs single ZK, and you know, 0.1% needs uh, multiple ZK to make sure provers on every level or every tier are around when we need them, right? So I, I want to make sure that people don't get me wrong. So with Tyco, when we launch a Tyco layer two, it's going to focus on that part of the, the spectrum, not anything here. Uh, this is the, our main, like the canonical like L2. But we will also launch some parallel L2 to test this protocol. Because if this protocol is um, useful, you know, uh, if you build your own app, you can focus on this part. Let's say you want to build a game. You don't really need to, uh, you know, to generate a lot of proofs. It doesn't make sense, right? So you can just use like 1% to generate SGX and 0.1% you know, uh, to generate a, a single uh, you know, a TK proof. And that's it, right? So we call this progressively hybrid, temporarily, maybe not, not the best name, open uh, for suggestions. So this is the, um, uh, a prototype that I have been building, but not ready yet. Uh, still a lot of uh, details to be figured out. So back to Taiko. So Taiko have launched um, four test nets. Uh, we, we still have two test nets uh, in production. Uh, one is a layer two, the other one is a layer three. They basically build on top of the same uh, protocol. So we, we also have this concept called inception layers. Basically, as a type one ZK EVM, you can deploy on top of yourself without making any modification to the uh, smart contracts. But we are going to deprecate, deprecate these two uh, um, you know, uh, chains very soon. Um, this month, later this month, we are going to launch the, another layer two, uh, which is not the hybrid one yet. But uh, in Q4, we are going to launch a, a hybrid layer two with the, uh, the design I just uh, talked about. And later, we are going to launch another testnet to support uh, the program charting, the block transactions. 
without that, I think the, the cost is still uh, too much. So that's Tyco. Thank you. Welcome on stage, Sita Dao, founder 